It's so Michael Popak, Legal AF. Just as I suspected, Donald Trump's lawyers are focused on the Evan Corcoran memos and voice recordings of the former attorney for Donald Trump that are in evidence and in the hands of the prosecution in Mar-a-Lago. They're focused on that because next week, as expected, as I reported earlier, they are going to move to suppress Evan Corcoran's 50 pages of single space notes of damning evidence and testimony against Donald Trump, connecting him to the required willful corrupt intent to hide and obstruct justice, up hide the documents and obstruct justice. That is the heart of the Mar-a-Lago case. If the Evan Corcoran memos and testimony that were required and compelled by a prior judge, Judge Beryl Howell, chief judge at the time of the D.C. Circuit Court, when she stripped Donald Trump of his attorney-client privilege and his ability to stop Evan Corcoran from testifying to the grand jury and ultimately to the regular jury, and stripped his attorney-client privilege because he found that Donald Trump more likely than not participated in a crime or fraud with Donald Trump. If um, Judge Aileen Cannon in Mar-a-Lago agrees with the defense and suppresses Evan Corcoran's notes, including testimony that he would give, that Donald Trump directed him to remove from the boxes and from the pile of information that Evan Corcoran was prepared to turn over to the government, representing the classified information that had been illegally retained, and that Donald Trump instructed him to lose it to make sure he didn't turn it over to the government. If that comes out, then the government is down to some grainy video footage of Walt Nauda and Carlos de Oliveira moving boxes around on, on closed circuit television. It is the heart. I can't stress this enough. I don't know if you can tell from the, the timber of my voice. I can't stress this enough. If Evan Corcoran's um, evidence and testimony is, is suppressed, does not come in, is excluded at trial by this judge next week during her trial, all hope for me is lost in the Mar-a-Lago case. I don't mean to put too fine a point on it. I've been talking about Evan Corcoran a lot. Let me catch everybody up who are just joining the story a little bit late. Evan Corcoran was the second but most important of lawyers for Donald Trump at the critical moment when he was retaining illegally the documents that belonged to the American people, national defense information, top secret classified documents. Um, Evan Corcoran is the one who negotiated, uh, 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 took over the negotiations with the National Archive for the, for the voluntary return. When that failed, because Donald Trump wouldn't allow his documents, his, he took possessory right over these documents and wouldn't properly go through them and wouldn't return the presidential records and the classified top secret documents. And then when the National Archive looked in the boxes that were returned and said, oh, Lord, there are top secret documents in here. What else does Donald Trump have? It was Evan Corcoran who was negotiating with them. He then brought in a, a, a couple of other lawyers to assist him, Christina Bob being one now indicted um, in, um, in Arizona, and brought in uh, Jennifer Little out of Georgia to work with him. But he was the lead lawyer for Donald Trump on all things Mar-a-Lago, especially after Tim Parlatore quit the case because of his fights with Boris Epstein, Donald Trump's consigliere. So you got Evan Corcoran naked here. Evan Corcoran is the one interacting daily with Donald Trump about complying with what started as a subpoena from the grand jury in DC, not a search warrant, a subpoena, voluntary compliance with a subpoena. But he allowed the fatal error um, or his willful blindness on purpose for Evan Corcoran as he turned his back on his client, knowing that he was likely corrupt and allowed him to take control of the process, the staging process, the reviewing of the 38 to 40 boxes process was delegated to Donald Trump, not by the lawyers. And, and on top of it, compounding and adding insult to injury, salt in the wounds, Evan Corcoran leaves Donald Trump with the boxes for over a week and says, I'll be back next week, boss to go look at those documents that you have. Well, that gave Donald Trump lots of time, and that's where the video uh, evidence comes in, to move these boxes around in an elaborate shell game, which is outlined in the indictment. So you got that. By the time Evan Corcoran returned a week or so later and checked into the Brazilian court hotel down the street from Mar-a-Lago, uh, smart enough not to stay at Mar-a-Lago, and he was then escorted to a room. That room was completely staged 
Donald Trump had already sanitized the boxes. He had already had Carlos de Oliveira sit on it with Walt Nauda, the two co-conspirators. And Walt Nauda and or Carlos de Oliveira didn't even want, um, based on Trump's direction, didn't even want Evan Corcoran, the lawyer, to look at the boxes by himself. We'll sit in there with you. He said, no, I got this. And he spent, based on his testimony, 20 minutes, 20 whole minutes looking at 40 boxes. It's almost impossible. It's not only incredulous, it's impossible. Comes out with 38 documents or so, shoved into a, uh, a red folder. He tapes it around the outside. But then Evan Corcoran's smart enough not to sign it himself. He has Christina Bob sign it as being the result of a due diligence search for classified documents. Even though he was told not to go into daddy's desk in the, uh, in the, in the 45 or office or whatever it was at Mar-a-Lago. Don't go in this room. Don't go behind that locked door. Don't go into this locked cabinet. Oh, oh, this lock door? We, we changed the lock on a week before? Don't go in there. So it's already, as you can see, self-selective would be putting it kindly by Donald Trump. Staged, sanitized. But yet he found, because Donald Trump is an idiot, um, he, his lawyer, Evan Corcoran, found 38 documents. He then had a dialogue. This is all in the notes that are in evidence. When I say they're in evidence, they're in the hands of the prosecution. We'll find out if there's going to be evidence in the trial based on the suppression motion. I, I misspoke there. Have you heard about NAD plus? It's one of the most important molecules in the human body to age well. NAD plus helps promote cellular energy, maintain healthy DNA, detect nutrients efficiently, supports detoxification and supports your cellular health. Simply put, keeping your NAD plus levels high is vital to helping the body feel youthful. But did you know NAD plus levels plummet with age? So by age 50, most people's NAD plus levels are only half of what they were at age 20. Luckily, science has discovered a way to boost your NAD plus levels up to 50%, and it's called Qualia NAD plus, a groundbreaking supplement from Qualia. The reason so many health experts use Qualia themselves, and the reason I'm proud to have them sponsor this podcast is you're simply not going to find more carefully researched, life-changing nutritional formulas, especially for aging well. Qualia NAD Plus is a supplement that includes ingredients called NAD Plus precursors that your body can convert into NAD Plus to boost your levels up to 50%. Qualia NAD Plus is a clinically tested and naturopathic doctor formulated. Look, I want to feel 30 when I'm 58. That's why I'm staying at the cutting edge of aging research and boosting my NAD plus levels with Qualia NAD plus is taking a huge part of how well I age and putting it in my control. After just a month on Qualia NAD plus, I'm feeling support and vitality return that I haven't felt in years. To boost your NAD plus levels up to 50%, go to qualialife.com truth for up to 50% off and use code T-R-U-T-H at checkout for an additional 15% off. That's qualialife.com slash truth for an extra 15% off your purchase. Thanks, Qualia, for sponsoring today's episode. And, and so Evan Corcoran says, okay, got him. Oh, you found some? This is my artist rendering for Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, 38 right here. And then Donald Trump... And this is in the notes of Evan Corcoran and in voice recordings of Evan Corcoran in the hands of the prosecution and, and form part of the indictment. Evan Corcoran says that Donald Trump basically told him to go back to his hotel at the Brazilian court and lose some of those documents. Just pluck them out. And he made a, literally made a plucking sound so cartoonish that Evan Corcoran wrote it in his notes. You know, made a plucking sound to pluck them out and then told a story that's wrong about... Hillary Clinton in her email server and how an IT guy deleted all of the emails and that was okay. As, an, as a suggestion, a veiled threat suggestion that Evan Corcoran should do the same thing with the documents that he's found. He didn't, he turned them over, but of course what, the, what Trump miscalculated and even Evan Corcoran didn't apparently know is that there were already cooperating witnesses, housekeepers, cooks, uh, va other valets, you know, the eyes and ears of a hotel. Think about it. The silent eyes and ears. Donald Trump doesn't even know their name. 
Donald Trump didn't know the name of, of executives with the title of vice president in his own organization during the New York Attorney General fraud case. How is he going to know the housekeeper that brings him his breakfast on a silver platter with Grey Poupon sitting next to it and a Mont Blanc pen? Um, he's not. But they were already cooperating with the Department of Justice. And so they knew from insiders, including a couple of executive assistants, that not all of the boxes were properly searched. Not all of the boxes were searched by Evan Corcoran. And there were more uh, throughout the residence, personal residence of Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago and at other places, which led them to go to Judge Reinhardt, the magistrate judge in Fort Lauderdale, and obtain that search warrant after getting approval ultimately from Beryl Howell up in D.C. That's how we got here. Evan Corcoran stayed on as counsel even after having the attorney-client privilege stripped away from him, being f compelled and forced to testify to the grand jury, having to turn over not only his 50 pages of single-space notes, but also his audio recordings. He was he was using like an audio voice memo uh, program app to record his musings about Donald Trump. Yeah, that's what you do when you trust your client. You create evidence for the future. And Beryl Howell had the chief judge in D.C., and we reported on it a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, um, held a secret hearing because all the hearings around the grand jury are kept secret to protect the sanctity of the grand jury process. And there was an, there were hearings and there was back and forth and there were lawyers on both sides. And the judge decided now crime fraud exception applies, meaning it is more likely than not that Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, committed a crime. Does that surprise anybody? She was not only the first, she wasn't even the first federal judge that had found that. Judge Carter in the Central District of California had already found that related to John Eastman and the Jan 6 committee subpoena. That's even before the convictions that Donald Trump just incurred for 34 felony counts in New York. He's always been a criminal and everybody's recognized it that's seen the evidence. The ones that won't recognize it and the, and the um, scales have not fallen from their eyes are his loyal supporters who don't know what the evidence looks like, who's never talked to a witness in this case, who hasn't seen the grainy video footage or the audio recordings or the documents or talked to any of the witnesses around the event. But I digress. Back to Evan Corcoran. If this judge suppresses and excludes Evan Corcoran's testimony and finds that the attorney-client privilege was improperly removed which would be, uh, I mean, just jaw dropping. And she reverses the decision of the chief judge of the District of, Col of, of the DC court, Beryl Howell. Yes, it's an appeal. Yes, it gets, it gets Jack Smith to the 11th circuit. But if that doesn't get reversed on appeal, and this case continues, I don't believe, I don't believe that the prosecutor will be able to make out their case for willful corrupt intent by Donald Trump. Well, let me put it this way. It'll be harder. It'll be like climbing Mount Everest without oxygen. Because then you're left with, well, now it is not going to testify against Donald Trump. Carlos the Oliveira isn't. They'll bring in the housekeepers and the valets and the cooks. They'll show the video. Donald Trump won't take the stand. And the question is, can they get over the threshold as a prosecutor to prove beyond a reasonable doubt willful intent of Donald Trump? They can through Evan Corcoran. That's how important that testimony, those that evidence and that document. Sure, it's unusual. I'd love to get my opposing lawyer's trial memo before I go to trial with him or her. I'd love that. It would give me a tremendous advantage. It is unusual, but it was done with all of the constitutional safeguards that are required. Why have the crime fraud exception if it's not going to be applied? And we have to defer to the discretion of the trial judge at that time. There could have been an appeal on that issue and they never took an appeal to the DC Court of Appeals or to the United States Supreme Court on the Evan Corcoran issue. My argument would be waiver that they've waived the issue Donald Trump has. Not, I mean, sure, they can always move to exclude whatever they want from a trial, but I think the issue is race judicata has been a stopped. He can't argue it any longer. We'll see what Jack Smith has to say about that in his filings before this mega double day hearing. This is what, this is what um, uh, Judge Aileen Cannon likes to do, drag everybody in, including people who don't even have a vested interest or a parties to the case in their counsel. And let's talk about all of these really interesting issues, like the exclusion of Evan Corcoran and his notes and his um, and his evidence and what it would do to the case. We're going to talk about it, but I want this to be an alert. This is the canary in the coal mine moment, and I'm bringing it to you right here on the Midas Touch Network and on Legal AF. Um, do it every Wednesday and Saturday, just like this. 
Except I got a co-anchor on Wednesdays. Karen Friedman, Nick Nifolo. Saturdays, Ben Mysalis. We curate the top four or five stories at the intersection of law and politics. Boom, we bring it right to you here exclusively. Midas Touch Network. You knew that. If you haven't free subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go back out. Free subscribe. I mean, free. I mean, that's it, man. No, no charge. But it does help build the network. That's how network building works. And we're doing it with our bare hands, just like with you, with your help. You are the network you've been waiting for. So uh, follow us Wednesday, Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you like watching your podcast, that's our YouTube for Legal AF if, uh, at the intersection of law and politics. If you like to listen to them, go over to every major audio podcast platform. You'll find us. And then you can find me, Michael Popak, here. <laughs> Leave a comment. It would help. That's for sure. And you can slide over to playlists or contributors on the Midas Dutch YouTube channel and look for Michael Popak. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.